Hello. Welcome to another edition of the Critical Thinker video blog. The video blog is connected with the written blog and can be found at www.thereadingcircleblog.blogspot.com. My latest addition to the Reading Circle, or rather to the Critical Thinker, was posted on yesterday, and the title of it is, Is There Such a Thing as a White Standard of Behavior? And I tell you where I received that from. I received it as I was reading the book by Manning Marable, and that is Malcolm X, A Life of Reinvention. And as I was reading through the book, I came across something that had always kind of made me wonder. And as I looked through here on page 45, it said, similarly, the zoot suit uniform was an act of defiance against white standards of behavior. Then as I continued reading, it said, like the zoot suiters, beboppers implicitly rejected assimilation into standards established by whites and were contemptuous of the police and the power of the U.S. government over black people's lives. Both sought to carve out identities that blacks could claim for themselves. And again, that caused me to question, is there such a thing as a white standard of behavior? Because this critical thinker does not believe it is. If anything, there is one standard of excellence that is the standard of excellence, regardless of your race, color, or creed. So as you read the blog, we get into this whole notion of talking white. What is that? When an African-American tells that or says that to another African-American, what is that saying about African-Americans? Is that saying that African-Americans always should do things backwards, should always be shucking and jiving, should not be doing things right? And at the same time, if you think about that statement, it gives way too much credit to our Caucasian brothers and sisters because you cannot equate doing something in this correct and proper manner with a race. So to say that if you're doing something in its correct manner or its proper manner, that you're doing it and it appears as if you're acting white, that really is saying or is a derogatory comment towards your own, own race. So let's take a look at that. If, let's say, for example, this quote-unquote white standard of behavior exists, then why wouldn't we look to surpass it? Instead of doing that, we do things just the opposite. For some reason, we feel as if carving out our own identity is wearing our pants, pants sagging, showing our underwear, or wearing our baseball cap flipped any old kind of way, turned around sideways, backwards, upside down, any way except for the way that the cap was designed to wear. And then to make it all the worse, we keep this silly little name tag on the brim or either under the bottom of the brim, and then when asked why do you do that, most of the time everyone says, I don't know. Or they say that makes it official. And the question becomes official according to who? And they can't tell you that answer. Or we run around here calling each other nigga. And it doesn't matter whether you spell it N-I-G-G-A, N-I-G-G-A-H, N-I-G-G-E-R, N-I-K-K-A. It doesn't matter which way you spell it. The term is still derogatory, and it is not cute. So for us to think that we're doing something by, well, we're turning it around, even though it was used bad for us or it was used in a derogatory manner, we're going to turn around and make it seem as if it's a cute term. No, it's not cute. It's still derogatory. We also run around here acting any old kind of way, and then we make the excuse. Well, we should have our own state. Well, we should be able to speak any way we want to speak. We should be able to speak Ebonics. As a matter of fact, I know I'm going to get someone watching this video or reading the blog that's going to come to me and say, well, Mark, why should we have to speak that way? Why can't we speak using Ebonics? Well, the bottom line is this. You're in the United States, and the expectation is that you are to speak in a correct and proper manner. The same thing with our clothing. It seems like we're anti-everything. Who in their right mind would actually go to a store and purchase a pair of pants that's already ripped to shreds. Does that make sense to you? So in any event, when we start talking about this whole notion of a white standard behavior, I dismiss that notion only because you either do something in its correct manner or you don't. You either do something in an excellent way or you don't. There is no such thing as you're doing it in a white manner or you're doing it in a black manner. I tell the kids all the time, just because you're growing up in the ghetto does not mean you have to be ghetto. There's a difference. It's all in a mindset. 
So I just dismiss this whole notion of such thing as a white standard of behavior. Because again, whenever you say that, that gives too much credit to our Caucasian people. And it also takes away from the African Americans who are doing things in a correct and proper manner. Doing things in an excellent manner has absolutely nothing to do with race, color, or creed. So we must move away from that notion that when someone speaks correctly, or they act correctly, or they're doing things in a proper manner, that they're acting white, or they're talking white, or they're trying to assimilate into a white standard of behavior. If you want to read more about that, please go to the blog site. As I said, it's called The Critical Thinker, and it's at www.thereadingcircleblog.blogspot.com. As always, I always welcome commentary on the comments section of the blog, or if you have the ability to do a video comment on this blog, please feel free to do that. And again, I will talk to you when we have the opportunity again on the next version of The Critical Thinker. Again, I ask you to go to the blog itself on www.thereadingcircleblog.blogspot.com.